Hey guys, um, changing up the scenery tonight. Um, I am standing here with a couple friends. I can't turn my camera around because I'm using, I probably could, I should figure it out. I'm using a new, I'm using a software for my phone and I don't know how it works. So, well, anyways, these girls here have a little story to tell. Kind of. One of them is a racehorse, currently, currently active ish racehorse. Um, and when we start racehorses here, um, they usually already have a buddy right from the beginning. Like from the time that we get them, um, weanlings, yearlings, whether we wean them from brood mares or not. Um, they're given a friend from the time they leave their mother here or from the time we get them. We do the best we can to give them a friend because horses are herd animals and they're meant to be together. And um, so they always get a friend and then that friend can stay with them uh, as long as they're here. And that, that's worked out really well for us. Not only does it allow us to turn out more horses for longer periods of time, but um, it leads to happier horses because they get to play and express themselves as horses are meant to. Well, you know, part of being in the racing industry is having to get rid of horses a lot more frequently sometimes than we would like, and definitely more frequently than they would like when it comes to losing their buddies. So, um, this is kind of the story here. Um, my friend Sid, back here eating her brunch. Well, it's, 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 it's dinner. It's the meal between lunch and dinner. <laughs> Anyways, Sid back here had a friend from the time that she was, um, brought here as a yearling to, or bought or however, whatever her story is. Let's just get straight. She's had a friend for a long time, a couple of years, a couple of years. She's had this friend and, um, <laughs> I got another friend coming dog attack. Hey, precious. Hi, honey. Hi. Anyways, Sid's friend uh, left her early, well, probably about three or four months ago. I don't know. Maybe a little longer. Um, and Sid did not respond well to that. She actually um, stopped performing, which when you have a racehorse and they're earning their keep and making money and all of a sudden they stop, that sucks. Um, and then she stopped eating, which... When they stop eating, you can't expect them to perform, right? It's this vicious circle. So, um, <laughs> pun, oh my. Okay, so Sid has a real name, and I may have just used it, like a registered name, and I may have just used it unintentionally. Anyway, um, so when Sid's friend left, she, like I said, she stopped performing, she stopped eating. And instead of responding to that with, I mean, well, we did to some extent, right? Like there was temperature taking um, in the beginning. There was uh, scoping and having vets out and things like that. All of that stuff gets done because we don't mess around because we care about uh, our, the health of our horses and we want them to be able to perform at their best. And if they're not as healthy as they possibly can be, then they're not going to perform the way they should. So, I mean, everything here is managed very, very carefully in terms of what they eat, when they eat it, all the things, right? So we go through all these things with Sid and try and make sure that all of the ducks are in a row and we're doing everything we can and we can't find anything wrong with her. Well, Sid needed a friend. Sid got a friend. You can't see her. There she is. This is Deidre. And Deidre is a retired racehorse. She's actually got a couple of awards. She's, she's, she was a hard worker and she is a tough lady okay she's also made some great babies and she is currently pregnant so she's just hanging out here munching food and she didn't have a buddy either so Deidre and Sid let's see if we can walk away and get you a decent view yeah <laughs> there we go Deidre and Sid became friends and look it obviously Sid's been eating this whole time um and guess what she started racing better Sometimes we need to consider everything, <laughs> not
not just the stuff that we think of off, duh, she needs food, she's not eating, maybe she needs different grain. You know, obviously you're going to call the vet. But sometimes it's not about that, you guys. Sometimes it's about your horse needs connection. Your horse needs connection. And not just from you, right? Like, we know that. They're herd animals. We are not part of their herd. We're not there all the time. It's like leaving your dog home all day. It kind of sucks. They're alone all day. They're missing out on connection too. But sometimes that horse just needs a friend. And uh, another great example of this is um, at another race horse, but he had been retired for a long time. And I used to ride him a lot. I actually made him into a show jumper. We did some dressage. He was a great horse. And he was a champion race horse. So they're very versatile. Anyway, um, when I outgrew him and I stopped riding him, he stopped eating. He was emotionally crushed. And I did not start riding him again because I was working with other horses, doing other things. Um, but what we did was we found him a place where he could go and spend a happy retirement as a pasture ornament with another horse who was also a pasture ornament. And the most work they did was occasionally go on a trail ride. Finding that replacement person or that replacement horse or, you know, filling that void for them, finding them someone to connect with is honestly just as important as <laughs> it's just as important as <laughs> having the vet out to see them. Meeting their emotional needs is not something you can overlook and expect them to perform at high levels and expect them to be able to show up and do the job or even just show up and be decent to be around. Or when you're depressed, are you like, when you're depressed and feel lonely, are you like, yeah, I'm going to go be awesome today? No. And your horse isn't either. So that's just something. This is. This is why I talk about what I talk about because I'm, I'm super passionate about not just producing with horses, not just accomplishing with horses, but helping them to be the best they can be, to be their optimal self. And for them to be that, we need to support every aspect of them, not just the ones that everybody talks about, not just the ones that cost us money. Well, unless you're looking for a pasture buddy because you got a depressed horse, that'll cost you money too. But I think you know what I'm saying. Anyways, that's all for tonight. My hands are freezing, but I wanted to share a little bit of them with you um, because I see it happen all the time that horses lose a buddy and people ask why they're stressed out, why they're being anxious and why they're misbehaving after they lose a buddy. They hurt. They don't know what else to do. They don't know how else to respond than to be obnoxious or anxious or um, acting out to get attention. So just a little food for thought for you tonight on this Friday night. I hope you had a fabulous week and you have an amazing weekend and I will catch you next time.